For as long as I've been in sports medicine, there's been one belief that pretty much everybody in rehab, strength and conditioning, and even the medical world has agreed on. And that is, if your neck is stronger, you're less likely to get a concussion. You've heard it on podcasts, you've heard it in locker rooms, and you've heard it on TV commercials. And to be completely fair, this idea did not come out of thin air. It came from what seemed, at the time, like a pretty reasonable interpretation of the literature. And for anybody new to the channel, this is Combat Athlete Physio, where we take human movement science and we bring it to the combat sports. Today, I wanna to break this idea down very very carefully because some of it holds up, but some of it absolutely does not. And to understand where we are now, we need to understand where we came from. So if you talk to clinicians who are practicing around the 2010s era, they'll almost all point to one specific study. You'll hear them say, because for every pound stronger your neck is, your reduction in concussion risk drops huge. This comes from Collins et al. In 2014, it was a large observational study looking over 6,000 high school athletes. And they concluded that for every one pound of increased neck strength, concussion odds decreased by 5%. And then of course that statistic spread like wildfire. I mean, it showed up in continuing education courses that I took and just infographics everywhere on the internet. And honestly, it was a great story because it gave coaches and clinicians something to do. It gave them a place. It was very simple and very palatable. But as with almost everything in human movement and really life, the truth is much more complicated. If you look over the past decade, countless professionals repeated this idea. And I wouldn't say they're bad clinicians for giving this advice. It was their interpretation of the best data that we had at the time. But there's a pretty glaring problem with this statistic. Most of us know that correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation. So given the fact that this 5% statistic was observational in nature or correlational and not strong enough to be claimed as causal, deeper research has challenged that entire premise. And the crux of the challenge is that strength alone isn't the full story. After the Collins article, multiple labs across the country started studying neck strength in more controlled environments. And as science tends to do, things started shifting. And in 2022, a systematic review by Cooney et al. looked at all available evidence and concluded something surprising. Neck strength does not consistently reduce concussion or head impact kinematics. And then a 2023 review in JOSPT kind of echoed the same idea. Neck strength shows mixed inconsistent and often negligible effect on real world concussion reduction. So then the question became, if strength equals protection isn't really true, then what is it that actually matters? So the answer to that question requires us to talk about the difference between two different concepts. That is strength versus stiffness. So when we talk about neck strength, what we're really talking about is the amount of force that your muscles in your neck can produce. And to put it simply, strength just equals force production at a certain joint angle for the purposes of the musculoskeletal or the movement system. But stiffness is completely different. So in biomechanics, stiffness refers to the resistance of a joint or structure in the body to movement once a force is applied. More precisely, the ratio of change in force to change in displacement. The basic idea is how much the neck resists movement during impact. Let's take a look at the human anatomy atlas app to see what it means when a muscle produces force and then we'll look at a clip and see how stiffness differs from this all right so in order to help demonstrate the difference between strength and stiffness we're going to go through what i would do to measure the strength of left cervical rotation which is the motion that you see here and i've also got a muscle highlighted so we can help visualize the forces and then one to demonstrate stiffness and we'll talk about the difference Okay, so like I said, this is just rotating the head to the left. And one of the big muscles that are involved in that is the sternocleidomastoid. Okay, so if I wanted to measure the amount of force or strength that the sternocleidomastoid could produce at a certain joint angle, I might stop the movement here. And then if I were in the clinic, I would put a force vector with my hand kind of around this area here. So that's going to be against the rotation to the left of the sternocleidomastoid. So I would push right on the temple on the other side. And so it's gonna move through the arrow, but you could see that it would be resisting that movement. So if that arrow represented the force or something we had in our hand, and it were to give us a number with the amount of resistance that the sternocleidomastoid, along other muscles, but the sternocleidomastoid was pushing against that arrow, that unit, whatever it gave us, would be the strength or the amount of force produced at a certain joint angle. So how does this differ from stiffness? Well, stiffness involves what's called a co-contraction, especially when we're talking about the neck and we're talking about the human movement system. In this particular scenario, it would be describing the co-contraction of all the muscles involved in the neck. So you can imagine that the muscles that surround the neck, so you've got muscles on the anterior, the lateral, and the posterior side of the neck, are all contracting to create sort of this really rigid column, this protective rigid column around the neck to resist that force. 
So again, it's that change in the force. So how much that force in the hand changed over the amount of displacement of the actual head, depending on what we're measuring. Okay, so we're keeping this simple. This is just the resistance of a joint or a structure in the body to an external force. So all of those muscles are co-contracting to create a really rigid column around the neck so that the joints in the neck don't move. Okay, that's the difference between strength and stiffness. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of that. This is the part that changes everything. When we're speaking about musculoskeletal movement, specifically at the neck, stiffness is thought to be driven by a co-contraction of the muscles in the neck before impact. So it's really fast and reflexive. And this matters because concussions happen in milliseconds. Now, this is the piece, particularly in the combat sports, that really not a lot of people talk about. When your head is impacted, the brain experiences peak acceleration in the first 10 to 20 milliseconds. This is important because that's faster than your muscles even have time to contract voluntarily. Even rapid isometric contractions can take 40 to 60 milliseconds just to meaningfully ramp up. So unfortunately, by the time you're hit, it's really already too late for you to use your strength to your advantage. But stiffness, if you're already braced, can matter. So here are some key studies that show us why strength alone falls short. Bussey et al. demonstrated that anticipatory postural adjustments, not strength, determine how much head acceleration occurs in inertial events. Mortensen et al. Biomechanical modeling showing stiffer necks reduce head motion, but strength only contributes if activation occurs before impact. Now, remember earlier when we talked about stiffness involving a co-contraction, and then we showed that the power slap guy was able to create a lot of stiffness because of the co-contraction in muscles around his neck. This creates pretension, a very rigid state. Really what I'm kind of gathering from all this is that strength without pretension is just unused potential. So here's why I think we need to update our entire mental model. A strong neck is definitely not useless. You guys have heard me say before that strength is never a weakness and weakness is never a strength. An unbraced neck, no matter how strong it is, doesn't seem to reliably reduce concussion forces because muscle activation is too slow and impacts happen too fast. So the concussion is already there before you voluntarily contract your muscles. And that brings us very nicely into the next section of the video. What, if anything, does help reduce concussion risk? Modern research is pointing towards a very different protective mechanism. It's not strength or size or even muscular endurance. In this area of research, the term appears quite often, and that's called perceptual cognitive preparation. And really all that term boils down to is the ability to see an incoming strike, anticipate it, and either brace or roll with the strike. But for the purposes of this video, this is where the stiffness occurs. Here are some of the studies shaping that new direction. Kung et al. in 2020 found that athletes who anticipate collisions significantly reduce head acceleration compared to unprepared athletes. Eckner et al. showed that anticipatory activation reduces head velocity change independent of strength. So as far as the modern research is concerned, this seems to be it. This seems to be where we need to go. It's more of a behavioral anticipatory change rather than just trying to brute force our way through a bunch of neck strengthening exercises. So what actually reduces risk? Anticipation reduces head acceleration. Preactivation or stiffness seems to be more protective. And then perceptual cognitive skills improve that preactivation. And then once stiffness is present, neck strength tends to supplement that very well. And just so you don't think I'm bullshitting you, I actually have an entire video on how I strengthen my neck without really any expensive equipment. I do it all at home. So go check that out. It'll be linked in the description below. Because the bottom line is that strength builds capacity. Strength still improves the ceiling of force that you can produce, the durability of the tissues under load, and things like the ability to maintain a good fighting posture whenever you're in a really long bout. But as we wrap up with the video, we now kind of believe that it contributes indirectly by enabling stiffness. And in my opinion, that's a healthier, much more accurate message. And it really isn't meant to be a discouraging message. It's meant to just be a clarifying one. It tells us that on top of training your neck for strength, you should prioritize your time in the environment of fighting. This doesn't mean go hard every single time, but it does mean that aliveness should be present. You shouldn't know what's going to happen before it happens, and it should also be uncooperative. Because when it comes to fighting, concussion mitigation isn't just one thing. It involves the entire system or the environment of fighting. Please let me know what you thought about this video, and if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel out. And just know that as the research continues to evolve about this topic, so will we. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time.